this year when we started this year by having a theme about building the kingdom of God and thanks God for giving us during the Holy Land to read the first and second book of Samuel in which we saw how the Lord established a kingdom for his people in the Old Testament. Today the Lord entered to Jerusalem to be the king of kings and the author of life. And when they received the Lord and accepted him, they greeted him saying, Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna to the king of Israel. So I just want to share with you some thoughts about the kingdom of David versus the kingdom of Christ. David was a symbol or a type to the Lord Jesus Christ himself in many things. Just I want to direct our minds to how the Lord chose David to be the anointed king of God. And it is very strange to see that David was anointed with the holy oil and anointed to be the king of Israel three times, not one time, as usual. And all the kings of Israel, they were anointed just once. But for David himself, he was anointed three times. The first time he was anointed secretly in his father's house. And after maybe 20 years, he was anointed to be the king of the tribe of Judah. And he spent seven years as a king of Judah only. And then after seven years being a king of the tribe of Judah, all the tribes of Israel, they chose him to be the king of the United Kingdom of Israel, all the 12 tribes. So let us go through these three steps. The first one from 1 Samuel 16. King over father's house. Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remain yet the youngest, and there he is, keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in, and the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from the day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. The second step happened 20 years after being anointed secretly in his father's house, after Saul's death. So David went up there and his two wives also, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David brought up the men who were with him, every man with his household, so they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. The third one, king over the United Kingdoms of Israel, the 12 tribes. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had stayed two days in the Zeklag. On the third day, behold, it happened that a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. So it was when he came to David that he fell to the ground and prostrated him. And David said to him, Where have you come from? So he said to him, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. Then David said to him, How did the matter go? Please tell me. And he answered, The people have fled from the battle. Many of the people are fallen and dead. And Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead also. So David said to the young man who told him, How do you know that Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead? And you know the story that the people of Israel came to David 
after two years of the death of Saul. Because Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, he was enthroned over to 11 tribes, and just David enthroned over one tribe, who is the, the tribe of Judah. After two years, Ishbosheth was killed, and then the 11 tribes came to David, and they asked him to be king over them. So when you go through the story of David, you'll find that David was enthroned or anointed three times. So what is the relation between this and between Christ himself and between ourselves? I just want to connect and to have a clear message that David was a symbol or a type of Christ himself and also a type for every one of us. Christ himself is a king and he was anointed as a son to his father before all ages. That was a symbol that Christ, on the word the Christ or the Messiah, it means the anointed. So the Jews accepted Jesus as a prophet. But we accept Jesus not just as a prophet, but as the Messiah. The Messiah means the anointed of God. He was anointed before all ages. When God the Father anointed him, the Son is equal to the Father before all ages, like we say in the Orthodox Creed, He is light of light, true God of true God. So when we go to the Psalm number 45, it is clear. David spoke about the Lord Jesus Christ Himself and how He had the same throne of His Father. And we will see it next, maybe next time. David enthroned his son Solomon in his life. So it was very, very clear that we have one kingdom with two kings equal to each other. One kingdom, one throne, one army, one crown, but two kings, David and Solomon. And that was very clear, a message, that both the Christ himself, the Lord, the Son of God, and the Father, they have one kingdom, one nature, but two different persons. So, king in his father's house, in Psalm 45, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. Scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And as you know, every one of us, we were anointed with the oil of gladness in our baptism to be united with Christ and to be in Him. As He was anointed before all ages security in His Father house, He gave everyone the same, to be the anointed of God. Also, there is a verse in Psalm 110. He said, the Lord said to my Lord, the first Lord, or the first word, presenting God the Father, the Lord the Father said to my Lord the Son, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. So when David was anointed by the oil in his father's house, that was a type of Christ that he is the Messiah before all ages. He is one with the Father before all ages. He called the Messiah before all ages because he was anointed with the oil of gladness in his father's bosom. But in the fullness of time, in the fullness of time, Christ was anointed as the Messiah on the cross in Jerusalem, on the tribe of Judah. So now we can understand why St. Matthew especially being, when he wrote his gospel special to, to the Jews, he insisted on this point, that Christ is the king of the Jews, because he was anointed, he was enthroned in the throne of Jerusalem on the cross, in the day of his crucifixion. So we can see in Matthew 27, when they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and a, and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed 
the knee before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Also in Matthew 27, 37. And they put up over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Finally, in the day of the Pentecost, when the Father sent his Holy Spirit upon the church to enthrone the Lord Jesus Christ, to anoint him as the King of the whole world, not only the King of the Jews, not only the King of the, the church, but the King of the whole world. So as David enthroned or anointed three times in his father's house in Jerusalem for all Israel, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the Messiah before all ages in his father's bosom. He is the king of the Jews on the cross. And on the, in the Pentecost, he is the king of the, whole, of the whole world. So in the book of Acts, second chapter, the dissension of the Holy Spirit, then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. There is a verse in the book of Ezekiel 34. Just before reading this, this uh, verse, I just want to direct our minds that this prophecy was written 300 years after the death of David and 700 years before Christ. As you know, David, he lived 1,000 years before Christ. So this verse, this prophecy, was written after David passed away 300 years. So let us read it. I will establish, the Lord saying to Ezekiel, I will establish one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, <coughs> my servant David. The Lord is saying to, to Ezekiel, the day is so close, I will anoint the new David to shepherd my flock, to shepherd my kingdom, to be the king of my, of my kingdom. I will establish one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, my servant David. The key in this verse, the word David. David in the Hebrew, it's Dawood. And the wood, it is very close to the Arabic one, wadud. It means the beloved. So the word David means my beloved. So this word, it is not about David the king, but about the new David who is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And it is clear, it is nice in every, every psalm in the hours of Pascha, when we pray, when we chant the, the, the psalm, we say in, in the Greek language, Psalmos to David. Psalmos to David. It is not a psalm of David, but the, the, the perfect translation, it is a psalm about David. So we are reading psalms not from David's writing, but about the new David who is the Lord Jesus Christ, about the Lord Jesus Christ's life. So David here is the Lord himself. He is the David of God the Father. He is the beloved. And it was so clear in, in his baptism when the voice of the Father came and said, this is my beloved son. This is my David. So what he said, my servant David. Be careful. David carried in his nature, in, in his personality, two natures. A king and in the same time a, a servant. And that's perfect example of the Lord he, uh, Christ himself, who carried in his person two different natures. The nature of God, the divine nature, and the nature of man, the human nature. So David being a servant and a king in the same time. So what about ourselves, just to conclude? 
As Christ, the new David, he was a servant and a king in the same time. So we are invited to be kings to God the Father. But there is no way to be king without accepting to be a servant. Without accepting to be a servant. So, when the Lord Jesus Christ came in our nature to bless our nature in him, he gave every one of us an access to be a servant and to be a king at the same time. So, every time you see the cross, remember that every one of us like this side of the cross, and this side of the cross has to be attached to three three sides or three wings of the cross. So I have to live with these three levels in my life to have my relationship with the Father as the anointed of the Father. The Father, he anointed me in my baptism to be like his son, Lord Jesus Christ, to have this relationship with the Father, to be his son. Also, I have to be king to my father. As David anointed Solomon in his life and he gave him all what he has the father gave me what all what he has in my baptism so I am invited to be king over the kingdom of my father he anointed me secretly in his fa in my father house in the day of my baptism when we, he anointed me with the holy Myron, with the oil of gladness and he anointed me to be Christ himself and in that day, I hear the voice of the Father saying about myself, this is my beloved son. So the first question, am I living as a king to my father, to honor him, to spread his kingdom, to live for him? The second mission or the second step, am I a king over Jerusalem? The Lord gave me my wife. The Lord gave me my family, the Lord gave me my body, the Lord gave me my time. This is my Jerusalem. And the Lord anointed me over Jerusalem to be a king of Jerusalem. Are you or am I faithful as a king over my Jerusalem? Am I, am I like David or like Saul? So the Lord gave me to be anointed on Jerusalem. The Lord gave me to minister his church. This is Jerusalem. I have to work in harmony with my, the other members of the, of the Lord in the church. I have to spread his kingdom. I have to minister as a king over Jerusalem. Are you an active member in the kingdom of God? Are you a king over your Jerusalem? The third step, are you king over the whole world. The Lord gave us to be his ambassadors everywhere, anytime. So just to finish. When in the book of Samuel, 2 Samuel, sixth chap the chapter number 6, verse from 13 to 20. When David built Jerusalem and for the first time he received the, 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 the Ark of Covenant to dwell in Jerusalem. So just to see what happened. I have just two, two passages to finish. And I prepared this sermon yesterday and I found today that is exactly what happened today in Egypt. So let us connect the entrance of the Lord to Jerusalem with what had, had happened in the past and what will be in the future. From the past, when the Lord Jesus entered today to Jerusalem, that's exactly what happened in the past 1,000 years when the Ark of Covenant entered to Jerusalem and David welcomed it. Let us see what happened. And I will read this by myself. By the last one, we will read it together. And so it was when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces that he sacrificed oxen and fatted sheep. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might. 
and David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. That's exactly what happened today. And we'll find all the psalms that we chanted today about, about that, that event. Now as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaving and riling before the Lord. <coughs> and she despised him in her heart. So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle. And be careful. The Lord, who he, when he entered today to Jerusalem, he did not enter to Jerusalem just because of Jerusalem. He did not enter to the the market place of Jerusalem or to the palace of Jerusalem, but he entered Jerusalem to go to the temple. So he entered to the temple, and that's exactly what happened. When they brought the Ark of Covenant, they put him in the, in the tabernacle of David. Then David offered burnt offering and peace offering before the Lord. And when David had finished offering burnt offering and peace offering, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. Then he distributed among all the people. Be careful. They accepted the Ark of Covenant as the Lord entered to Jerusalem. They put the Ark of Covenant in the tabernacle as the Lord entered to the temple. And then what happened? He distributed among all the people the Eucharist. He established the Eucharist among the whole multitude of Israel both the women and men, to everyone a loaf of bread and a piece of meat and a cake of raisins. So all the people departed, every one to his house. Then David returned to bless his household and Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David. That's presenting what happened with the Jews when they mocked the Lord, betrayed him, and said, how glorious was the king of Israel today uncovering himself and be careful of every word uncovering himself he chose to go to to ascend to the cross uncovered naked because that was the first state of adam that exactly what david did so when michael uh, saul's daughter she said that that was a prophecy about the lord himself how glorious was the king of israel today that's exactly what we chant, Lahne Bekethronos. Your throne, God, throne of glory. Uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants, as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. Finally, to finish, let us take from the book of Revelation, chapter number 7. And exactly when you see what happened today in, in Tanta Church, the deacons, they were in this place, in their place, offering uh, their sacrifice to the Lord, chanting the hymn of Eflogimenus. And while they say, Osanna, the son of David, that man came to the church and he bombed himself, he exploded himself. And while they are saying, Hosanna, in, in no time, they, they were in front of the Lord himself. It's amazing. So say what happened. Say what the Lord said about the future in the book of Revelation. Let us read it together just to comfort everyone. Let us say it together in the spirit of worship. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, 
thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. In he who sits on the throne he will dwell among them, neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat, for the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shiver them and lead them to living fountains of water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Amen. And glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit.